great loss. It most certainly is. Let let's jump off of that. Let's I want to I want to talk a little sports. Obviously, we are a sports show. Um, Chris and I have been going back and forth over the last few days. Uh, UFC. I know that you're not a big MMA guy, but you have been involved in boxing for years and years and years and years. Um, and and you used to run fights like you were just talking about. Uh, UFC 249 is happening on April 18th. And the way that they have yeah, set this up. Yeah, it's island, right? Yeah, they, are, they bought a private island, and they are doing fights there. The reason their initial plan was to do it at their own facility in Las Vegas. But the reason they couldn't do it at their own facility, where everything was already set up anyway, was because they couldn't get the fights sanctioned because the Nevada State Athletic Commission told them that they're not going to allow any fights. Well, if you buy a yeah, private but, but, island, but, 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 but let me tell you something. That, that, that's that's ridiculous. I mean, why don't they just go to an Indian, uh, an, an Indian casino? Uh, agreed, agreed. But it's, uh, it's, so, a, it's a sovereign nation. I mean, I mean, look, when 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 I, somebody first confronted called me up about doing bare knuckle fighting, I'm like, maybe in Mississippi, but <laughs> State of Tennessee. I, I sit on that commission, and they ain't gonna let me uh, get that pass. And Next thing I know, they're doing it in Arizona at a at a, at, a, at a Indian casino because they're a sovereign nation. I never would have. I never even thought about it. Out of all the places we were trying to figure out how and where they could do this at, that would have been a whole lot cheaper. Uh, yeah, I yeah. Think so. Well, I think I think it's irresponsible. Well, so explain I, this to it's me. My like, opinion, it's irresponsible. Well, it, so and and we kind of thought the same thing, but if if you're not going to have the fight sanctioned anyway. Well, because there's no way to if if you're on a private island, who's going to sanction it, right? Uh, why well, not yeah, just you do have it? your own sanctioning body? So, but if but couldn't you do that in your own facility in Vegas? Well, you know, there's some there's, there's a fine line there. There's a very fine line. There. You can get yourself a little bit of trouble, especially if you're broadcasting it live, uh, and you're not paying the. Uh, the broadcast rights taxes to the state, they're going to have a problem with that. And if, and if they're not sanctioning it, then they're not, then they're not going to be able to, they're not going to have somebody there to, to pick, to collect the taxes. I mean, it's, it, it's a, it's a whole thing so, when yeah, you're dealing with the state. Tell me, tell me about that. Like that's, I knew that you would know about this and, and you were on what the Tennessee state athletic commission. Is that right? For, uh, oh, for the four governors. Yeah. Okay. So, so explain this to me because I don't know how this works. It, how do you go about getting these fights sanctioned? What is the purpose of the sanctioning? Uh, you know, if you've got an organization like the UFC who already has their own doctors, their own medical people, that everybody signs their waivers, there's insurance, everything else. How? What is the sanctioning process, and and why is it there? Well, you know what? Because the unscrupulous promoters of years past. A fighter's not getting paid. Fighters fighting on their assumed names. Fighters fighting five times in one week. You know, I mean that, that that's got a lot to do with it. But then, then again, on the on the flip side, of it, there's a there's there's uh, the, the tax part of it. Everybody's got to pay a fee. The timekeeper, the referee, the judges, the seconds, the managers, the fighters. Everybody's got to pay a fee to the state. You got to have a license to the state. That is interesting. Then you got gate taxes. So uh, basically, you, 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 and you do an HBO fight or a Showtime fight, they have to pay taxes to the state. That's why Showtime and uh, HBO and all those guys, they, you know, we could go to Ontario, California, do it cheaper out there than we can in Memphis yeah. or in the state of Tennessee. <laughs> they overtax them. Well, that so that's how the uh, the Mike Tyson and, uh, and Lennox Lewis thing ended up happening. Nobody would sanction. Uh, or approve Nobody Mike Tyson. Nobody sanctioned Mike Tyson because of uh, his supposed, you know, crime that he probably didn't commit. But uh, and, and and trust me, you know what? A rapist should be taken out back and uh, buried head down. But uh, I I don't I, I there was something very odd about that whole thing. But nobody wanted to touch him. In fact, Mark Ratner, who was the state commissioner in Nevada, when he heard that we were. When, when, when the state commissioner called me, because I was the chairman of the committee, he says, can we license them? That's all I mean. We don't have a multi-turpitude clause in the state of Tennessee. And and the taxes that, that you're going to, and 
you're going to pick up out of this whole thing for a world heavyweight championship fight. It's unbelievable. So we need to license this guy. I mean, my mother got mad at me. She said, you're licensing a rapist? Ma, you know what? You got to know the whole story. But the yeah. thing is, you know, there's, there's, not a, there's, there's not a moral turpitude clause in, 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 in your, your state statutes. But, you know, it, it's up to the, the, the state commissioner whether he wants this person to do it or not. And if he's got enough lawmakers, you know, screaming at him, he's going, okay, he's in. But it, it wasn't even that with, 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 with here. Uh, Brian Young called Tommy Patrick. Patrick called me, and I'm like, you know, I don't see any re- – there's no rhyme or reason why we couldn't get a, a, a license. And so we did. And, you know, it was a $67 million impact to West Tennessee. Yeah, it, it was Nobody was, was bitching nasty. about that on Sunday. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So let's so back to UFC 249 for for just a minute. The this whole thing happening on a private island. What there has to be some kind of a risk here for them because I understand it's a cash grab. There's no live sports going on right now. These are they've got some pretty big fights lined up on it. They're going to get everybody to this island and they're going to kind of quarantine everybody there aside from the health risk. Uh, which I don't know that there is much. What, what, what risks could there be for them, um, not just financially, but as far as fighters getting hurt or anything else? At what, what kind of ramifications could come out of this? Well, look, the testing that, that the UFC does on fighters is it, 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 it's, it's pretty big. I mean, they don't just let somebody, they pull somebody off the street, put them in the ring. Right. I mean, these guys got to, they got to, they, they got to go through a massive amount of, of, of tests to get a license. Not just from the state, but from their organization. And, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's mixed martial arts. Come on, human cockfighting. I mean, what are you talking about here? I mean, what, 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 what can happen? What can't happen? I mean, it's a sport. I mean, Dana White's going to do what Dana White wants to do. That's true. And you know what? I I don't see anything. My opinion, I don't see anything wrong with it. As long as he's abiding by all the rules and regs that he would in the states and in Great Britain and Africa or wherever, whoever would would be a governing body close to this island, even even though you buy the island. It's still got to be under under somebody's jurisdiction. Yeah, that's it. That's and true. somebody's getting a paycheck. Somebody's getting a paycheck. Oh, a hundred percent. Like it, these things don't come cheap. They don't come free. Uh, there's something else with it, and it's it's very strange to me that he won't tell anybody where this place is. Uh, but he's he's well, doing fights there for uh, for the next two months every weekend. Well, like I said, Dana White uh, has got plenty of dough. Cash is not an object. Um, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that, uh, uh, he couldn't sit tight for, for a little bit and, and, and let this pandemic run its course because I mean, it, it, some people would look at that, that they're not, that they're not combative fight our fans that, you know, this guy, you know, something's all wrong about this. You know me, I look at it this way. Uh, it, it, as long as he's, uh, Got his doctors and 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 his his his, his referees and his judges and, and and it's probably the same people he uses all the time. Oh yeah. And from what from from what I've witnessed of some of his shows, you know, it's everything's above board. Have I've you, never, have you ever met him? I've never. Yeah, yeah, I met him uh, when they did the thing at uh, at the forum. At uh, at the forum, yeah, yeah. He called. He called me. He called me and says, uh, hey, this is uh, Dana White. I'm, I got your number from somebody, and uh, they said you might be able to hook me up. I got this TV show called Dana White Looking for a Fight. Is that the, is that, is that the name of his TV show? That's it. That's it. That's the one. Okay. Well, yeah, he, he says, well, I, and while I'm in Memphis, I want to get introduced to a, a blues musician, and I want to write a song with him, and I want to perform it live on a stage on Bill Street. 
So I called Eric Hughes, and Eric put some things together. Dana came in town, and I put him on the stage at Rum Boogie Cafe. Well, there you go. <laughs> Every saw, show time. I, I got to meet Dana one time. Uh, and we didn't have a conversation, anything like that. I just shook hands with him, but he was at the uh, V3 fights uh, over at Minglewood Hall. And uh-huh. he, he was doing the same thing for his TV show. But he, he seems like a good guy. I, we did have a comment jump in on YouTube. Uh, Matt said, Dana is going to be smart about it. If he messes this up, it's going to be a huge black eye for the UFC. Uh, and I think exactly. that's right. Who, whoever, whoever, whoever messaged you in is absolutely right. Yeah. I, I think he's Absolutely got to be right. he's got to be right about this. He's got to do it the correct way. I, I think that it has it may have some political ties there. I mean, obviously he's good friends with Donald Trump. Um and they want to get sports back rolling. Donald, look, look look here. Donald Trump's got his hands full right now. Agreed. I, <laughs> agreed. He he <laughs> did, he doesn't need any more stuck in his boat right now. Now you're hundred percent right about that. A hundred percent right. All right, Mike, we're going to go and let you go. We're going to finish up talking some, uh, right, some college football. Hey, hey, look here. One, one, one thing right quick here. Okay. Just shout out to, uh, to, to, to uh, um, Ditch at uh, Rock 103. Okay. He put things into perspective this morning on AM60. And something that, that, that I have yet to hear anybody say, but it was, it was so true to, to form regarding this, 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 this COVID-19 as opposed to how many people die each year from the flu, cancer, and so on and so forth, it doesn't even match up to those numbers. Oh, yeah. So people need to, I mean, we need to take this this whole thing as serious as possible, especially the kids from 18 to 30. I think that's who's uh, spreading it around the most, right? Yeah, and they need to, they, they need, they need to stay home. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. too will pass. They need to stay home. That's, I've I, lived my life. I've had a great life. I've lived my life. These kids are just starting out. They need to stay home. Yeah, take it seriously. They got plenty of time left in their life to to, to enjoy things. Uh, Mike, I've been home for over four weeks. I'm I'm I've never wanted to go to a bar more or go to a show more in my entire life. You know, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm so dead. I'm, I'm just... back and forth taking care of my mother in uh, grocery shopping and and and, and, uh, and taking care of a few other people and. You know, I got my plate full, and, and I'm trying to be responsible, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm only grocery shopping once a week and doing the drive through with the pharmacies for people. But uh, this is – this is uh, I've never seen anything like this in my life. My it's, mother can tell you about the Depression era, but, uh, you know, that, 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 that uh, it, it's, it's pretty incredible.